Uh, well, uh, it's about time, that time. The gentleman doesn't need any, any, any introduction. Like people say, that, oh, call me, what, what, what? So that I don't mind. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Director of Ceremonies, esteemed participants to this training, and um, Mr. Rudolf Traub, residence representative. I think as I was whispering to you, what you have demonstrated here is what they say wisdom comes with age, to some, not everyone, <laughs> but certainly to you. Let's give him a round of applause. and gentlemen of the media and uh, my sister Selby we have worked together for many many years uh, you have assisted us in Swapo Ethnic and in Swapo and you work hard with the Swapo Women Cancer yeah okay I'm emphasizing that because last time when I spoke at an environment like this there was NBC and they came and captured what I was saying and they went and took it to some other people. Next we saw we were fired. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, we were expelled. And, yeah, the next time. Now, today, I'm happy to have been invited by the four partners who have come together to initiate this very important platform. And also honored that I would be later on officially launching this program titled Namibia Patriot Role of a Young Namibian Patriot. The organizers and the team of partners, we should give them a round of applause. My remarks, I would like to take you to the Constitution, especially all of you, the, the trainees, yeah? and I hope you would find the time to read the Constitution. I have just taken a few excerpts from the preamble of our Constitution, and just the three. One is recognition of the inherent dignity and of equal, inalienable, inalienable rights of members of the human family, all of which are indispensable for freedom, justice, and peace to prevail. Mm. Second, these rights are most effectively maintained and protected in a democratic society where government is responsible to a freely elected representative of the people, operating under a sovereign constitution and a free and independent judiciary. These rights have, of course, as you know, for so long been denied of our people by colonialism, racism, and apartheid. And finally, on that preamble, it says, as a result, and I quote, we, the people, unquote, accept, uh, the people of Namibia accept and adopt the Constitution as fundamental law of our sovereign and independent republic. And the following words are the reasons why I'm quoting this preamble. And quote, which expresses for ourselves and for our children our resolve to cherish and to protect the gains of our long struggle against colonialism, racism, and apartheid, unquote. These excerpts are 30 years old. They were inscribed in the Constitution in that process of negotiation to adopt the Constitution, which took place in that year of our Lord, 1989. You remember that year? 1989. Those who, were, those who participated in the writing of that constitution, 
and those that are still alive, each of them to their age has been added 30 years. Because 1989 plus 30 years gives you 2019. I salute them with emphasis for their futuristic expression. Again, quote, adopt the constitution with which expresses for ourselves and for our children, and unquote. These children contemplated therein are those of you born in a free and independent Namibia. Those of you that will be born in a, in a Namibia that is free. And we know our independence is from 21st March 1990. The person who's speaking also happened to have voted for the first time in 1989. So therefore, I am also an ancestor in so far as the democratic transfer, uh, transformation of our country uh, is concerned. It is you, the young people of Namibia, and those yet unborn that must love Namibia. And this love and loyalty to Namibia is, in my view, what patriotism is all about. On its part, citizenship is defined in the Constitution under Chapter 2, Article 4. It stipulates the requirements that are bestowed on a person to become a citizen of Namibia. And young as you are, it is instructive that you should be able to read that. Read that so that you know. Nobody can tell you or spice it for you that which you yourself have read and able to understand. Once again, salutations to you, the organizers, for having deemed it agent to launch this patriotic discourse. Uh, the Namibian patriot, the role of a young Namibian patriot. It is the young patriots present and the future that will protect the gains of our long national struggle against colonialism, racism, apartheid, and above all, the new vices of corruption, nepotism, tribalism, and all those other retrogressive tendencies. Director of Ceremonies, the world belong to the young children. The world belong to the children. The children cannot be and could not be what they are without them having been biologically produced by the elders. So the elders, therefore, need not feel uh, agitated. They are just the offsprings that you have created. Just like in Benin, just like in Germany. So the process of biology is the same. You look at most what they could do. Life is like a relay race. How many of you know a relay race? You know it, eh? We start with full energy, but the end, at the end of that race, we get drained, and therefore pass on the relay button to the next runner. Without that button, the race can no longer be a relay race, but something else. In my view, patriotism is the button which each generation must bequeath to the next. Patriotism is not and must not be an abstract concept. The patriot must try for equitable distribution of the country's wealth to all our people. The patriot, therefore, must also be economically strong, politically astute, technologically advanced, culturally sound, sociologically in tune, and above all, morally and spiritually human. Yes. <laughs> the Constitution, as quoted above, is clear what or how that can or will be done, and what we need to know. There is a saying that he who knows not and knows that he knows not is wise. 
he who knows not and does not know that he knows not is not wise. Some other people call it other name. For purposes, because you are younger than me, let me not say that. Otherwise, Ims uh, will not give me a walende when I go to the <laughs> Yeah, the Namibian Patriots training program is time. I hope that it will work with government institutions like the Namibian uh, National Youth Service. For your information, National Youth Service was founded precisely on the understanding that we must instill in the young people patriotism. At the time we were still in the office, how the National Youth Service uh, was founded. So therefore, this initiative you have can work with the National Youth Service. Find them where they are sleeping, wake them up, and be able to make them understand that this is a statutory obligation to ensure that, yeah, yes, okay, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah, please stand up. This, this man here, he has also gained something. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> The young uh, fraternity for many many years. Yes. Agriculturalist and he does all other things, and he's also linked with us to Aradnis. The first time. <laughs> yeah. So you NYS, the office of the ombudsman, the University of Namibia where we are, uh, etc. To educate Namibians about patriotism and citizenship. In Kavango there's a saying. Kwatoko na mkwendi, likaliove chiluli chikongomoka. That means, when you are in a village trying to put up a hut, you know that traditional hut, it is very difficult, no matter how strong you are, that you yourself alone must make all that hut to stand strong. Normally it is the community, normally it is the people in the area, in the village, some of whom may be family, not families, and so forth, they come together. They help you with the balance to make sure that the gravity and all matters of things, of architecture, of that standard, is put together. So therefore, patriotism also requires that we, each one, take this hand, take that hand, and we work together. Would it again? Yes. So we need to be able to do that. Once again, always remember, that every Namibian has equal and inalienable rights, just like all members of the human family. Unfortunately, some do not know that. Some think that others are maybe holding rights for them. So some think that they are citizens on behalf of other citizens. And some people who belong to certain organizations think they are members of other members. Individual rights. Each, every person in Namibia, you have uh, that right. Equally, as per Article 95 of the Namibian Constitution, read together with uh, the rights and freedoms contemplated under Chapter 3, all patriots must be active and they shouldn't be passive citizens of Namibia. And I implore you, many of these provisions I'm quoting, I hope you'll be able to go and read them so that you internalize them. Don't take my word for it. Go and read it. You know there are some pastors who can tell you it is John so, 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 but it is not true. So please go and read and asserted whether what I'm saying is true. But sure enough, if you read Article 95, it will tell you that you, as a citizen, there are certain things you must do. You must be seen to be actively involved, okay? These rights are like the oxygen of your life. Only God can take it away from you. Nobody else of human and flesh, because they too, they too are at the mercy of Comrade God to plug it or hear it. So don't be scared. It is yours, yours only. 
director of ceremonies. There is no sin to be an active citizen. I think there is a big sin to be a passive citizen. Many of those who endured hardship, those who paid with their lives in the resistance war against Imperial Germany, against Portugal, against England, against apartheid colonialism, those who sacrificed their youth, those maimed and persecuted, all of them were active freedom fighters, fighting patriotically for a free and independent Namibia. Passive citizenry will mean betraying those whose blood waters are free. Passive citizenry would mean betraying the future of Namibia. Therefore, every Namibian must be active citizen. An active citizen is a fearless patriot. A patriot is by nature respectful and tolerant of views of others that may not conform to your own views. A patriot is like the sun. It shines for all and reaches everywhere. Patriots, in my view, are therefore different from parrots. <laughs> the former should have the ability, that's now the patriot, the ability to think and reason independently, whereas the latter behaves like a programmable machine in a human flesh. I'm not suggesting that patriots are infallible and therefore have no mistakes, no. On the contrary, they are human of flesh and blood too. They make mistakes, but those mistakes must be honest mistakes. The parrots, on the other hand, find it difficult to process information without being influenced to do so. For example, the programmer will greet the parrot in the morning and say to the parrot, good morning, it's programmed. The parrot will say, good morning, good morning, as the programmer goes to work. When the programmer returns from work, and says to the parrot, good evening, parrot. The response from a parrot, unmistakably, will be, good morning, sir. <coughs> Do you see the difference? Because the, the programmer did not tell the parrot that the time of day has changed. So whereas I left you in the morning, I'm now back in the evening. So good morning for him was a parrot the whole day. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Until the owner comes, hey, switch. Oh, good evening. That's the difference between a parrot. And that is not how citizens should be. And that is not how patriots should be. What is the application of patriotism in the context of Namibia. You find, for example, there are some who are employed to be servants of the people. They are to be employees of a government which, as per the Constitution, is elected representatives of the people. Some of these people, too, should be engaged so that they know or are assisted to know what they don't know so that they can expand on what they already know, especially on the matter of patriotism. You find, however, some that will make a remark in our society about them versus us. They would fuel the innuendos. Apparently, these ones there are pro-government, and these ones are anti-government. And they are doing so as representatives of an elected government. You know and you have heard of it. These statements come from those who are supposed to know. This type of people in our elected government are giving the government a bad name because they eat 
and become oversatisfied. And when they are oversatisfied, they order those that have not eaten, in order for those that have not eaten, to clap hands for them because they have eaten and they are oversatisfied. <laughs> a patriot working for a government that is condescending to the level of the lead should not do that. A patriot must be empathetic to the plight of the downtrodden, to the plight of the disadvantaged, especially in a country, as you have alluded to, where majority are unemployed, where majority are poor. So you that is a servant of the people, you must behave at all material times as a servant, because they never elected you to be a master. If you were a master, you were probably going to be God, which you are not. The disadvantage, therefore, they too need to be assisted to know their rights, read the Constitution, understand the Constitution. Otherwise, you may consign the, yourself, this is now the downtrodden, to the inferiority complex of thinking that you are perpetually, you are just a downtrodden forever. Like some of us, I remember when we were trying to do uh, science and mathematics in apartheid, they would tell you that because you are black, you just forget, you will not pass. And then you go home, they say, yeah, what, Nuan, mathematics? No, 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 your head is too, too Hard. Yeah, it's a hard, then your head is too hard. And then you end up actually believing that your head is harder. You see, the more they tell you, you think, oh, no, no, my head, no, no, my head is too hard. No. And then they go and tell you that, you know, blacks, your hair is too short. That's why you can think like whites. Then you say, yes, oh, oh, yes. You, you end up believing it because it is constantly being pumped into you and you think that you are not. So therefore, when you see somebody else who is supposed to be a servant, you are just prostrating yourself. Hey, master, please walk over me. <laughs> so that kind of passive citizenship must fall. And that is not what 30 years after independence that we should see. So what is to be done is the question I have been given in this uh, discourse. I have some few ideas to live with you. Literature suggests that aspirations for active citizenship is not unique to us here in Namibia. In fact, countries like Britain, they too have been confronted by a specter of society that abstained from active participation in governments. In their case, the worrying trends were observed in which some citizens decided that um, they would not vote at all. And that is what we call voter apathy. The solution was to institute what was called citizen, citizenship education. It was effected through changes to the curriculum for students up to the age of 14 years. In other words, what we are facing is not new, but there are some differences of what they are. Now, other countries, it's not only Britain, others too. For instance, uh, Scotland, Denmark, Canada, United States, they also have come up with initiatives which they call uh, to advance active citizenship. In some countries, even those that are uh, aspiring to become citizens of that given country, Britain is one, US I know is the other, before you become and qualify to be a citizen, you have to write a test to see how well acquainted you are of the country that you are going to become a citizen of. So if, uh, if you fail, you go back to Mongolia or, I don't know, but, but at least there is an initiative for you to be able to, to become a well-informed uh, citizen. Because if you are not a well-informed citizen, they pull you left, you go. They pull you right, you go. They pull you up, you jump. They pull you down, you go. That is not what citizenship should be. I therefore propose, Director of Ceremonies, that citizenship education, we should also introduce it in our schools so that Namibians of tomorrow should know better 
than us. They should govern better. They should manage the economy better. They should reform institutions of government better. They should equitably and practically distribute the economic wealth of the country better. I have always held the view that there's nothing which makes Namibia or the whole of Africa inferior in comparison to the United States or the countries of the West, or to Germany, etc. I think the only thing that seems to be the difference is that these societies, they have a, a culture of maybe you have practiced it for a long time, maybe this democracy thing is also maybe new to us, I don't know, but uh, the fact of the matter is that these Western societies, you find people who are reading, they have a culture of reading, George can publish a book today, tomorrow the one in Kachina Kashi finish reading it. Some they do research, some they find a way of uh, understanding the constitution and the theories around it, about the constitution. You see, you talk about Greek uh, democracy came from there, you know, the city-states, how it happened and so forth. How that then, if you can uh, plant it at Oshkulufitu, what kind of effect it will have at Oshkulufitu. Maybe Oshkulufitu also must have a certain theory of democracy. Now, where am I leading to? What I'm saying is that the Western societies, they have strong institutions. And these strong institutions are run by patriots of those countries, those who understand the values and ethos of those countries. And hence, if somebody comes to them to tell them stories of abracadabra, they cannot succeed. Maybe we need to do more. And I dare say, in that process, especially you, the young people, especially to you, the young patriots. It's fine and well when you quote all these dead whites in Europe who were philosophers and whatever. I would rather you also quote dead blacks here in Namibia. Those ones who were our grandmothers, our grandfathers, and the philosophers in their own right. They are the ones too you must quote. They are the ones, too, you must write books about. Do you understand me? Yes. Yes. Eh? Yes. Que like uh, that philosopher in France was saying, like Kant was saying, you have never seen Kant. Oh, like, uh, yeah, Adam Smith, fine. Adam Smith of Batire, show me. Why not uh, Edipo Smith? <laughs> Edipo Smith can also do it. You also can do it. Gela can be the professor that can be quoted. Uh, Job can be the professor that can be quoted. Some will not quote him because uh, no, no, they say he hates his anti-government. You even scared when you walk. Who's that? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you see? But when you hear, oh, there is a uh, whatever, Jesus was walking on the cloud, you are quickly. <laughs> yeah, so what I'm saying is, the societies that we are emulating, the Western societies that we are emulating, they have gone through certain processes. Let's learn from them. I, I'm happy to hear BNB you are started by a woman. Please, women, you must you relate. Yeah? You see? Because a man should not bring you every time they see you, apparently you must get in their BMV. You must say, I am the founder of this BMV. Be proud. So which means if the German women can start up with a BMV, you can also start up here in Namibia, NBVN. Yeah? So therefore, whether you are a teacher, whether you are a lawyer, whether you are a parent, a nurse, a journalist, a woman, a doctor, a security guard, a cattle header, you need to be a part. In your classroom, grandmother, grandfather, they can be patriots, the best patriots ever.
just because they cannot speak this this language we are doesn't mean that they are less of uh, better with wise people at all. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Namibia belongs to you. Yes. To love and be loyal to it as patriotic citizens. The power belongs to the people and is exercised on their behalf by government after every five years. You must, in your study, make a distinction between government and the state. I'm sure you know that difference, is that? Yes. Please always hammer on that. Understand it. Some people do not understand that difference. The state is forever. Government is temporary. You understand it? Just like you, you are enjoying this life up to 70 years until the, the oxygen is plugged by Comrade God. <laughs> yeah? 70 years. You will go, but life will continue. continue. Namibia will continue. That is why the process of biology is very important. It is the relay race where we live, where we have, like there are young people now, we have, uh, you know those other processes? You know? We have now the kids. You know that process. I can't say it. Yeah. But it produces offsprings. And those offsprings take over where we have left. Therefore, patriots, Namibian patriots from the south, do not harden so as not to be able to speak to your brothers from the north. Patriots from the east, do not be too proud and not speak the language of your sisters in the west. Patriots in the west, do not shy away from convening with your brothers and sisters in central Namibia to advance the torch of nationalism. Here is Matthias, he can speak Kwangari, he can speak Damara. But some of you, you want to speak Chinese, but you don't want to speak Kwangari or Nyemba or any other language. Some of you are even imagining to dream in French because apparently it's romantic. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of you dreaming in Oshkwanyama because it is more romantic. <laughs> Instead of dreaming in Nama, because it is even magnifique. Finally, once again, what unites us is more than that which divides us. May God give us the serenity and understanding to know and to advocate for tribal unity, economic unity, and national unity. Patriotic citizens and the patriotic government must selflessly speak the same language on the heartbeat of one Namibia, one nation, in which all people, all the two million Namibians, over two million Namibians, must live together in harmony and with equal access to its socio-economic opportunities. I'm humbled and it is my honor to launch this noble and historic initiative, the Namibian Patriots Training Program, which is fittingly titled The Namibian Patriot, the role of the young Namibian Patriot. It is my hope and prayer that the Namibian Patriotic Initiative shall take this message that we share here today to all corners of Namibia from Okangwati to Arwa, from Arwa to Okatana, from Okatana to Wahanas, from Wahanas to Sibinda, from Sibinda to Mankumpi, from Mankumpi to Mdaungilo, from Mdaungilo to Epukiro, from Epukiro to Arandes, from Arandes to Nehare and Pingana, in all 121 constituencies, 14 regions of our country. God bless Namibia, and I thank you very much.